If we look at geopolitics today and we ask ourselves, what is a civilizational state? What are the examples of civilizational states? We have to first look at what the standard state is. Now, the standard state in the Eurocentric history or geography that we're taught is a continental European nation state. A nation is an ethno-linguistic community that's tied through imagined bonds. You don't know every single person in your nation, but you have this subconscious feeling that, oh, because we share the same language or the same ethnicity, which in Europe is conflated with language, so language is ethnicity until recently, we are one, and hence that gives us a right to self-determination and to exist as a nation. The best example is the various partitions of European states in the 19th and 20th centuries. For example, there was the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was a multinational, multilinguistic, multi-ethnic, composite monarchy, which after World War I, was divided on the basis of linguistics and ethnicity. It was carved up into Czechoslovakia, into German Austria, into a rump state of Hungary. Then Croatia and Bosnia were given to a new kingdom called the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, later to become Yugoslavia. And uh, you also had Poland, which was resurrected from the ashes. It had ceased to exist for a while, uh, having been carved up in the past. And it was all based on surveys, which counted what language was spoken in each district, in each settlement. Now, this conception does not really apply to other continents. That if you look at North America, South America, and Oceania, or let's say Australia, New Zealand. These are all settler colonies. They don't have a definition based on a nation in this sense, or ethno-linguistics. They are settled by European invaders, who then created outposts of what they call Western civilization. Whereas Western civilization is a huge misnomer, because there's no Western civilization, just like there's no Eastern civilization, it's a gross oversimplification. In fact, there isn't even a European civilization or European culture because there isn't a continent called Europe. There's a European subcontinent on the continent of Eurasia. We know that it's one continent because the Mongols came without any geographical obstacle and raided Europe and even settled there. There's many Central Asians who, for example, Hungary, Bulgaria, Turkey are settled by the descendants of Central Asians who came unobstructed. So what you do have in the European subcontinent of the Eurasian continent are a distinct Hellenistic civilization, a distinct Celtic civilization, a distinct Latin civilization, distinct Slavic civilization, distinct Germanic civilization, distinct Nordic civilization, distinct Baltic civilization, distinct Magyar or Hungarian civilization. Now, these do not always find themselves expressed in the form of a state, but some of them do. In the rest of Eurasia, you see much better examples. So Russia, China, and India are examples of civilization states because they see themselves as the successors to centuries or millennia of certain set of values, beliefs, and as we said, imagined communities. Now, another example could also be Iran, which is a Persian civilization state, as well as a Shia civilization state. So it functions as a two-in-one package. Under the Shah, before he was deposed, there was a conscious attempt to reclaim Iran as the successor to Cyrus and Darius of the ancient period by the festival of Persepolis. So there was a huge festival where they invited the world's royalty and diplomats and presidents to the ancient capital of Persepolis and engaged in traditional Persianate revivalism around Darius, around Cyrus. That was unfortunately nipped in the bud after the Iranian revolution. But there is still a very distinct Persian civilizational conception of what their ethnicity is, as well as now reinforced by being the guardian of Shia Islam, as opposed to Saudi Arabia, the guardians of Sunni Islam. Now, what else can be considered a civilizational state? Turkey is a very interesting example. Turkey sees itself as the successor state to the Turkic civilization, even though the Turkic civilization comes from what's now Xinjiang and Kazakhstan. Now, Xinjiang has its own challenges, being part of the People's Republic of China, and Kazakhstan is not exactly a power player 
in geopolitics, which leads to this bizarre situation where Turkey, modern day Turkey, the people are not ethnically related on the whole to the original Turks, to Ertugul and all these Ghazis who are so popular in Pakistan, for example. A very small percentage of them are actual descendants of Turkic tribes. Most of them are Anatolians, Greeks, and Armenians who were forcibly converted and forced to speak Turkish and now have been taught by centuries of the state to see themselves as Turkish. As a result, they are the successors to the Turkic civilization and act in that way. So when we see neo-Ottomanism, what they call Erdogan's uh, ideology, it's an expression of that. And you see very interesting incidents, especially nowadays as DNA testing has become accessible to all, of uh, very proud Turkish nationalists, civilizational nationalists taking DNA tests and then being told that they're 90% Greek and 10% Armenian and then raging on the internet that this is a Zionist conspiracy by evil Israeli DNA testing companies to destroy the Turkish bloodline and uh, civilizational identity. Whereas it only proves to everyone that this is how the civilization transferred itself and poured itself into an empty vessel, so to speak, and continues to live. So Turkey is a civilizational state. If we go a little bit more west, can Greece be considered a civilizational state? I would argue yes, not because of ancient Greece, but because of Byzantium. The independence movement of Greece, which started 200 years ago in 1821 against the Ottoman Turks, was not necessarily a revival of the ancient Hellenistic principles, although that was an important part of crafting that identity, but it was tied more closely to the loss of Constantinople, the loss of Byzantium, and the reassertion of that Orthodox Christianity that had been suppressed and their identity as the second Rome. So that's a civilizational state. Russia, after the fall of Byzantium, called themselves the third Rome, and Russia has a very unique composite culture as well, that it's difficult to call Russia a nation state because it has many ethnicities, it has many different subcultures, but it's tied together by this shared destiny. And that could be as the Kievan Rus, it could be as the Russian Empire, it could be as the Soviet Union, and it could be now as the Russian Federation. In the rest of the world, let's say in Africa, unfortunately, because of colonialism. The borders have been drawn in such a way to prevent any assertion of civilizational identity. So the only civilizational state in Africa is Ethiopia, the only country to never have been colonized. You can draw a straight line between ancient, medieval, and modern Ethiopia. As a result, the rest of Africa, when they were fighting for independence, even in the Caribbean, when Afro-Caribbeans were fighting for independence, who did they look up to as the godfather of all African nationalism? They looked up to Ethiopia. They looked up to Emperor Haile Selassie, uh, Rastafari Makonnen, in some cases, even as a prophet to be worshipped. And a lot of the flags, so the colors of African nationalism come from the colors of the Ethiopian flag. That's why Ghana, Cameroon, Guinea all have a combination of green, yellow, and red in their flags to pay tribute to the only African civilization that was never colonized. And in fact, defeated Europeans who came to colonize it like Italy. So with that in mind, a civilization state is not an aberration. In fact, there's many of them, but because the Anglosphere doesn't have any, and they have an inferiority complex about that, and instead they would like to say, oh, we have a values-based civilization and anyone can become a British citizen by conforming to these values or an American citizen by conforming to these values. They seek to delegitimize and undermine the existence and concept of a civilizational state. Now, the more countries embrace this uh, concept and this identity, the better it is for everyone because it's more honest. It allows countries to set the terms of the discourse around them and within them that at the end of the day, a state is a vessel for the aspirations of the people and the people are the components, the atoms of a civilization. And that's important to learn, that a state does not exist just to protect the status quo. The state belongs to the people, it belongs to the civilization and should be harnessed in that direction.